could have been giving these interviews probably within two or three months after 9-11, maybe even quicker. And uh, what she says here is, to a large extent, corroborated by her own handwritten submission to the Port Authority Police, and I will show you an example of that handwritten submission in a moment. But first, I want to go through six common characteristics of explosions, and then we'll look at what Sue Keen says uh, relevant to each one. And by the way, I'm no explosion expert, but I do know how to read. And uh, the six common characteristics are taken from James Thurman's book, Practical Bomb Scene Investigation. Mr. Thurman is a former FBI explosions explosives expert. Oh, I was going to show you an example of the North Tower. Perhaps I should. A clip that you saw yesterday. But here's the point, before I get to Sue Keen. Corroboration is one of the processes we use when we're dealing with eyewitness evidence. We look for other eyewitnesses who can corroborate uh, what the particular eyewitness has said. We look for other eyewitnesses and we look for entirely different independent types of evidence to see if that will corroborate what the eyewitnesses said. So now I'm remembering that I did want to uh, do two more things before I move to Sue Keen. First of all, first question, are there other eyewitness reports which support, that is corroborate, the eyewitness testimony that you saw by Dennis Tardio, Pat Zoda, and Paul Lamox. In other words, are there other eyewitnesses that talk about this very specific uh, process of distinct explosions coming down the towers? And there are, and I'll read three of them quickly. So this is corroboration through uh, evidence of the same kind. Ross Melantich, Chase Manhattan ba uh, Bank, talking about the South Tower, quote, it started exploding. It was about the 70th floor, and each second another floor exploded out for about eight floors before the cloud obscured it all. Next witness, John Busey, reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Off the phone and collecting my thoughts for the next report, I heard metallic crashes and looked up out of the office window to see what seemed like perfectly synchronized explosions coming from each floor, spewing glass and metal outward one after the other from top to bottom with a fraction of a second between the floors blew to pieces. That was published in the Wall Street Journal, September 12th. And the third one, Kenneth Rogers, firefighter, talking of the South Tower. We were standing there with about five companies and we were just waiting for our assignment. And then there was an explosion in the South Tower. A lot of guys left at that point. I kept watching. Floor after floor after floor. One floor under another after another. And when it hit about the fifth floor, I figured it was a bomb. Because it looked like a synchronized, deliberate kind of thing. This, these are very clear eyewitness statements. We're not talking about vague booms here. And then I wanted to give you, before I moved to Sue Keen, pardon me for the uh, getting out of order here, one example of corroboration through a different kind of evidence. So here is Paul Lemos, who's very specific that he's very clear that he's talking about the North Tower, and not just the North Tower in general, but a corner of the North Tower, as he talks about these distinctive energetic events. So wouldn't it be good if we had a video clip of a corner of the North Tower? And we do. So we'll, we'll look at that. It's a close-up of one of the videos Richard showed yesterday. Excuse me. Hmm. Now you'll see it in a slightly more close-up. Again, if anyone would like to see it later, I've taken it apart frame by frame. 
you can measure the speed of the ejections, the, uh, the uh, acceleration, the length. It's very easy to do. And of course, there's plenty of evidence for these ejections in the building. It's not rocket science to figure out how fast they're moving and so on. Now then, now we get to Officer Keene. And let me remind you who she is. She was a, a member of the Port Authority Police for 13 years, and pro sorry, for eight years, and prior to that was in the US Army for 13 years. She knew more about explosions than most of us, and had in fact been trained in how to react to explosions so as to not get injured. How do I know? Because she says so. And these are the six characteristics and her comments. Sound. Not invariable, but common in relation to explosions. What does she say in her account? A couple of minutes later, it sounded like bombs going off. That's when the explosions happened. Positive blast pressure phase. The device explodes and a pressure wave moves out rapidly in all directions. Hot expanding gases and compressing and displacing the atmosphere, creating this potentially very violent uh, movement. And this, of course, this is the effect that Hollywood likes. This is when you see people's bodies being thrown and glass broken and all these. This is where most of the damage takes place. What does she say? The windows blew in. We all got thrown. Each one of these explosions picked me up and threw me. Partial vacuum during positive blast pressure phase. As the atmosphere is rapidly displaced outward, there is a low pressure area created near the, the site of the explosion, called a partial vacuum here. What does Sue Keen report? There was this incredible rush of air, and it literally sucked the breath out of my lungs. Negative blast pressure phase. A low pressure area is an unstable situation. Pretty soon the air will come rushing back in to where it was displaced from. Thurman tells us that this too can be destructive, though it's not as destructive as the positive blast pressure phase. What does Sue Keen describe? Everything went out of me with this massive wind. Stuff was just flying past. Then it stopped. It got really quiet. And then everything came back at us. I could breathe at this point, but now I was sucking all the stuff in, too. It was almost like a backdraft. It sounded like a tornado. Incendiary or thermal effect, obvious. He threw me under the hose, which in a way felt great because I didn't realize until then that my skin was actually burning. I had burn marks, not like you'd have from a fire, but my face was red, my chest was red. And finally, fragmentation and shrapnel. There was stuff coming out of my body like you wouldn't believe. It was like shrapnel. It's still coming out. And now just an example of her handwritten testament, her handwritten statement to the Port Authority Police, which is different from the statement I've used here, but which corroborates it in many important respects. Massive amounts of debris, concrete dust, and bodies or parts were more frequent at this point. Then there was an eerie silence, and it was just like you knew something was going to happen. There seemed to be one explosion after another. I was separated from the guys from the bridge by another explosion, massive again, sucking the air out of your lungs, and then just a wind more intense this time, with larger pieces of debris flying, and so on. She has to end her account. She has to cut off her account before she finishes it, because she's getting too emotional. She says, I hope maybe I can come back to this later, but she never does. So I've now uh, completed uh, the first part of this point, namely the dealing with quality eyewitness testimony. And if you were to ask me what do I think Sue Keen uh, perceived, I would say I believe she perceived exactly what she said she perceived. Massive explosions. And any account of the collapse of the towers that doesn't take that into account is flawed. Now I want to go on quickly to the issue of quantity and just give you a little bit of an overview 